Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a story from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The name of the textbook is First Flight and the name of the story is Madam Rides the Bus. So let us read part 3 now. You please open your books on page 1222. The story goes on like that, her first journey, what careful, painstaking, elaborate plans she had to make for it. She had thriftily saved whatever stray coins came her way, resisting every temptation to buy peppermints, toys, balloons and the like. And finally, she had saved a total of 60 pies. How difficult it had been particularly that day at the village fair, but she had resolutely, you know, stifled a strong desire to ride the merry-go-round. She wanted to go, but you know, she, you know, controlled it. Even though she had the money, after she had enough money saved, her next problem was how to slip out of the house without her mother's knowledge. But she managed this without too much difficulty because every day after lunch her mother would take a nap uh, from about 1 to 4 or so. So that means her mother is taking rest or sleeping and that is the time the bus also comes and Wally can easily sneak out and sneak in. Wally always used these hours for her excursions as she stood looking from the doorway of her house or sometimes even ventured out into the village. Today, these same hours could be used for her uh, first excursion outside the village. Generally, she would go into the village, but today outside the village. The bus rolled on now, cutting across a bare landscape, now rushing through a tiny hamlet or past an odd wayside shop. Sometimes the bus seemed on the point of gobbling up another vehicle that was coming towards them or a pedestrian crossing the road, but lo, somehow it passed smoothly, leaving all obstacles safely behind. Trees came running towards them. It looks like that when we are traveling in a bus or in, in a train as if trees are also running along and then uh, stopped as the bus reached them, simply stood there helpless for a moment by the side of the road before rushing away in the other direction. How beautifully the writer has explained the whole scene. Suddenly, Wally clapped her hands with glee. Let us see what happens. A young cow, tail high in the air, was running very fast right in the middle of the road, right in front of the bus. The bus slowed to a crawl and the driver sounded the horn loudly again and again. But the more he honked, the more frightened the animal became and the faster it galloped, always right in front of the bus. Now the animal was nervous and was not going on the side. Somehow this was very funny to Wally. She laughed and laughed until there were tears in her eyes. Hey, lady, haven't you laughed enough? Called the conductor. Better save some for tomorrow. At last the cow moved off the road and soon the bus came to a railroad crossing. A speck of a train could be seen in the distance, growing bigger and bigger as it drew near. Then it rushed past the crossing gate with a tremendous roar and rattle, shaking the bus. Then the bus went on and passed the train station. From there it travelled a busy, well laid out shopping street and turning uh, entered a wider thoroughfare. Such big bright looking shops, what glittering displays of clothes and other merchandise, such big crowds, struck dumb with wonder. Wally gaped at everything because she hadn't seen 
such shops in her village. Then the bus stopped and everyone got off except Wally. Hey lady, said the conductor, aren't you ready to get off? This is as far as your 30 paisa takes you. No, Wally said, I am going back on the same bus. She took another 30 pies from her pocket and handed the coins to the conductor. Why is the something the matter? No, nothing is the matter. I just felt like having a bus ride and that's all. Don't you want to have a look at the sights now that you are here all by myself? Oh, I would be much too afraid. Uh, greatly amused by the girl's way of speaking, the conductor said, but you weren't afraid to come in the bus. Nothing to be afraid about that. She answered, well, then why not go to that stall over there and have something to drink? Nothing to be afraid of. You can go there and you can have the cold drink. So the girl was adamant. She said she will not get down the bus and she will not take anything. Even though it was a busy public road, merchandise and things were being sold. So she said, I don't want to have anything. I don't have enough money. I have the money I gave you. I just have that much money. So the conductor said, I will pay for the cold drink. I will get the cold drink for you. But she refused. She said, no. And the conductor shrugged and they waited until it was time for the bus to begin the return journey. Again, there weren't many passengers. With this, we have come to the end of part 3. But I have a few comprehension check questions for you. But there is one question which we need to think about. One has to be careful of strangers. Does this apply to online applications and social media as well. See, we are going beyond the real world into the online world. We have to be very careful so far as the real world is there. We should not go out. We should tell our parents. We should seek their permission. But these days, everything is happening online. Your classes are happening online. And you are also exploring the world with the help of internet. So does this apply to online applications and social media as well? You should have a discussion with your friends, with your family, with your teacher. And you must know what are the do's and the don'ts. You have to be safe in this world also. Okay, it applies to everyday life as well as it also applies to the virtual world. With this, we have come to the end of part 3. And now I want you to read part 4 on your own. And in the next session, I will discuss part 4 with you. Till then, happy reading. Thank you.